So glad you're joining us today for this story of Jumping Mouse. It's one that has touched me many times in many ways, and I'm so grateful that you're here to, to hear it and to share your perspectives. Um, I'd like to introduce my mother, uh, Miss Julia Simmons here. She will be co-hosting with me, uh, admitting people into the room and assisting with um, monitoring noise, you know, so in terms of your mics, microphones, uh, keep them off for the most part so we don't get a lot of background noise. And um, certainly if you feel called to speak, we welcome your words and your voice. And so, uh, but in general, uh, we'd like mics to be off. Uh, so this story is uh, one that was written by Mr. John Steptoe. John Steptoe uh, only lived to 38 years old. He was from Brooklyn, New York. And uh, he won the Caldecott Award twice. Um, this story actually won that Caldecott Honor Award. And uh, he was born September 14th, 1950. Uh, he only lived to 38 years old, but in that short life, he wrote uh, 20 different stories and illustrated and he often focused on, um, he's African-American, so he often focused on helping children to feel pride in their origins. And if you listen to this tale of Jumping Mouse, uh, listen for the times when we feel pride, you know, for the origin of the mouse or the other animal friends in the story. And think about where you might feel pride in your origins, in your family of origin, your place of origin, and just who you are as a human being um, that is different from other animals that we come into contact with. So I just wanted to honor John Steptoe for bringing this story, this beautiful medicine story to us. And um, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about a rite of passage. So a rite of passage, as many of you know, has very specific steps that we've recognized. Um, the first being the calling. And this story, Jumping Mouse, it has a lot to do with the calling. <clears throat> and what I mean by the calling is it's, a, <clears throat> it's this feeling that something needs to change or that I need to go into the mountains perhaps and be alone for a while or I just don't know what I need, and a, a ceremony is called for. So <clears throat> look for how this story uh, and Jumping Mouse hears the call, and when he listens to that call, what call do you hear um, in your own life to try something new or do a rite of passage or get a new job or whatever uh, calls you? Um, and then the next step in a rite of passage is the severance. And the severance is when we, we cut ourselves off from our normal life. Um, there is a time in the story, you'll notice, where a uh, jumping mouse returns to his village. And maybe he doesn't feel totally comfortable or welcome there. And so he needs to sever to some degree his old connections that are no longer um, working for him in the way that he really wants them to. So that is the severance. And then once we have gone out on the mountain or wherever we choose to do our vision quest, then we get to the threshold. And the threshold is a very important part of the journey where we're on the, the verge of a change and we can feel this change happening in our bodies and our minds and our spirits. And so the threshold is, is a very important stepping off point in any rite of passage. Um, finally, once we have stepped off into the unknown, into the mystery, then we come to a place of reincorporation because you know we must return to our more normal lives. I say normal, but our day-to-day -day typical life we must return to that. And often we bring gifts with us. And usually those gifts are not in uh, a physical form. You know, Some of us may find a turtle shell on our journey and choose to gift it to another. But a lot of times the gifts that we receive 
through our vision quest, through our rites of passage, are not something we can see, hear, touch, or feel, except perhaps we can feel it in our bodies. You know, there's a gift that I received through uh, all of the vision quests I've done, and I bring it back to my village. And, and it's a beautiful thing to have that reincorporation stage to connect back with our village and our people. Um, so back to uh, Jumping Mouse specifically and how this story fits in, uh, I want to just recognize that um, there's some specific themes in our Jumping Mouse story. Uh, one of the themes that I mentioned earlier was hearing the call. So listen to where that is in the story if you choose to do so. Um, also, some themes that I recognize that touch me in my life are feeling misunderstood or passionate curiosity, you know, um, finding a new name, or how many of us have received a very important vision or understanding of our life and we share it with others and we don't feel heard or we feel alone. And there's so much joy in feeling this gift that we've received, but it may not be something that others are ready for. And we may have to surrender to that. And that brings me to another theme that I find in Jumping Mouse and that's surrender. Um, what does that mean? And we'll go over that in one of our breaks. As a part of this story, we'll, we'll uh, have a few breaks where uh, we'll separate you out into breakout rooms and you will be able to talk about the story. Um, something that Cater Brown, uh, my guide and teacher, has mentioned many times is that there are times in the story where you might leave. In other words, maybe your mind goes off into a uh, a rabbit hole, as he likes to talk about it, and you follow a little, you know, rivulet that takes you into like a great understanding of something that you're, you know, maybe questioning in your life or, you know, just any little time that you find yourself in your imagination, where do you go, you know, and what do you bring back? What can you then share with us perhaps. And that's where these breakout rooms come in is to share where the story touches you or where it brought you to a place of deeper understanding in your life. Um, so once I start the story, I will pause and we'll shift to breakout rooms as I said. Um, so once again, I welcome you all. I appreciate your attention. It means so very much to me that you're here. Um, and, you know, thank you for listening. <clears throat> the story of Jumping Mouse. Once there was a mouse. He was a very busy mouse, searching everywhere, touching his whiskers to the grass and looking. He was busy as all mice are, busy with mice things. But once in a while, he would hear an odd sound. Huh. He would lift his head and he would squint really hard and try to see what that sound was. His whiskers wiggled in the air and he would wonder. One day, he scurried up to a fellow mouse and asked him, Do you hear a roaring in your ears, my brother? No, no, answered the other mouse, not lifting his busy nose from the ground. I hear nothing. I am busy now. Talk to me later. He asked another mouse the same question, and the mouse looked at him strangely. Are you foolish in your head? What sound? He asked and slipped into a hole in a fallen cottonwood tree. The little mouse shrugged his little whiskers and busied himself again, determined to forget the whole matter. But there was that roaring again. It was faint, very, very faint, but it was there. One day, he decided to investigate the sound just a little. 
leaving the other busy mice, he scurried a little way and listened again. There it was. He was listening hard when suddenly someone said, hello. Hello, little brother, the voice said. And Mouse almost jumped right out of his skin. He arched his back and tail and was ready to run. Hello, again, said the voice. It is I, Brother Raccoon. And sure enough, it was. What are you doing here all by yourself, little brother? Asked the raccoon. <laughs> the mouse blushed and put his nose almost to the ground. I hear a roaring in my ears, and I'm investigating it. <clears throat> a roaring in your ears? Replied the raccoon as he sat down with him. What you hear, little brother, is the river. The river? Mouse asked curiously. What's a river? Walk with me and I will show you the river, Raccoon said. Little Mouse was terribly afraid, but he was determined to find out once and for all about the roaring. I can return to my work, he thought, after this thing is settled, and possibly this thing may aid me in all my busy examining and collecting. And my brothers all said it was nothing. I'll show them. I will ask Raccoon to return with me, and I will have proof. All right, Raccoon, my brother, said Mouse. Lead on to the river. I will walk with you. Little Mouse walked with Raccoon. His little heart was pounding in his breast. The Raccoon was taking him upon strange paths, and Little Mouse smelled the scent of many things that had gone by his way. Many times, he became so frightened, he almost turned back. Finally, they came to the river. It was huge and breathtaking, deep and clear in places and murky in others. Little Mouse was unable to see across it because it was so great. It roared, sang, cried, and thundered on its course. Little Mouse saw great and little pieces of the wood carried along on its surface. Fumbling for words, Little Mouse said, it is powerful. It is a great thing, answered the raccoon. But here, let me introduce you to a friend. In a smoother, shallow place was a lily pad, bright and green. Sitting upon it was a frog, almost as green as the pad it sat on. The frog's white belly stood out clearly. Hello, little brother, said the frog. Welcome to the river. I must leave you now, cut in raccoon, but do not fear, little brother, for frog will care for you now. And raccoon left, looking along the riverbank for food that he might wash and eat. <laughs> little mouse approached the water and looked into it. He saw a frightened mouse reflected there. Who are you? Little Mouse asked the reflection. Are you not afraid of being that far out in the great river? No, answered the frog. I am not afraid. I have been given the gift from birth to live both above and within the river. When min winter man comes and freezes this medicine, I cannot be seen. But all the while Thunderbird flies, I am here. To visit me, one must come when the world is green. I, my brother, am the keeper of the water. Amazing, Little Mouse said, it, said at last, again fumbling for words. Frog asks, would you like to have some medicine power? Medicine power? Me? Asked Little Mouse. Yes, yes, if it's possible. Then crouch as low as you can and jump as high as you are able. You will have your medicine, Frog said. Little Mouse did as he was instructed. He crouched as low as he could and jumped. And when he did, his eyes saw the sacred mountains. Little Mouse could hardly believe what he was seeing, but there they were. But then he fell back to earth and he landed in the river.
with a big splash, at least a big enough splash that a little mouse can make. Little Mouse became frightened and scrambled back to the bank. He was wet and frightened nearly to death. You tricked me, Little Mouse screamed at the frog. Wait, said the frog, you are not harmed. Do not let your fear and anger blind you. What did you see? I, ha, uh, ha, uh, the mouse stammered. I saw the sacred mountains. And you have a new name, Frog said. It is Jumping Mouse. Thank you, thank you, Jumping Mouse said and thanked him again. I want to return to my people and tell, this, uh, tell them of this thing that has happened to me. Go, go then, Frog said. Return to your people. It is easy to find them. Keep the sound of the Medicine River to the back of your head. Go opposite to the sound, and you will find your brother mice. Jumping Mouse returned to the world of the mice, but he found disappointment. No one would listen to him. And because he was wet and had no way of explaining it because there had been no rain, many of the mice were afraid of him. They believed he had been spat from the mouth of another animal that had tried to eat him. And they all knew that if he had not been food for the one who wanted him, then he must also be poison for them. Jumping Mouse lived among his people, but he could not hit, forget his vision of the sacred mountains. The memory burned in the mind and the heart of Jumping Mouse. And one day, he went to the edge of the place of mice and looked out onto the prairie. He looked up for eagles. The sky was full of so many spots. Each one was an eagle. But he was determined to go to the sacred mountains. He gathered all of his courage and ran just as fast as he could onto the prairie. His little heart was pounding with excitement and fear. He ran until he came to a stand of sage. He was resting and trying to catch his breath when he saw an old mouse. The patch of sage old mouse lived in was a haven for mice. Seeds and many things to be busy with. Hello, said old mouse. Welcome. Jumping mouse was amazed. Such a place and such a mouse. You are truly a great mouse, jumping mouse said with all the respect that he could find. This is truly a wonderful place. And the eagles cannot see you here either, Jumping Mouse said. Yes, said Old Mouse, and one can see all the beings of the prairie here, the buffalo, the antelope, rabbit, and coyote. One can see them all from here and know their names. That is marvelous, Jumping Mouse said. Can you also see the river and the great mountains? Yes and no, Old Mouse said with conviction. I know the great river, but I am afraid that the great mountains are only a myth. Forget your passion to see them and stay here with me. There is everything you want here, and it is a good place to be. How can he say such a thing, thought Jumping Mouse. The medicine of the sacred mountains is nothing one can forget. Thank you very much for the meal you have shared with me, old mouse, and also for sharing your great home, Jumping Mouse said but I must seek the mountains. You are a foolish mouse to leave. There is danger on the prairie. Just look up there, Old Mouse said with even more conviction. See all those spots? They are eagles and they will catch you. It was hard for Jumping Mouse to leave, but he gathered his determination and ran hard again. All right, this is one of those times, the first time, so where we're going to do a little breakout room. Um, I've got a prompt, uh, a question or two that I'd like to offer. Um, and you're welcome to discuss these questions. If something else is burning in your mind and you want to discuss that, feel free to jump off the path. It's really often the way to go anyway. But if you like my questions, feel free to discuss them. First of all, is there a time in your life where you felt pressure to stay where you felt comfortable 
but some hidden force drove you down a lesser known road. So I'll repeat that one more time. Is there a time in your life where you felt pressure to stay where you felt comfortable, but some hidden force drove you down a lesser known road? And then one more simple one is, how do you lean into the mystery? All right, I'm gonna set up some breakout rooms for everyone. This will be a random thing. There'll be groups of five. And then you can discuss anything you'd like to, uh, you'd like to discuss. Hey, mom, how many um, participants are there, 41? Looks like it. I'm gonna go ahead and do eight breakout rooms. So one of you will have six. And we're going to have about 10 minutes, and I'll let you know about a minute beforehand when we're coming to the end of our 10-minute time. Could you, you put the questions in the chat so we can see them? I'm sorry? Could you put the questions in the chat so we can see them? I will. Thanks. Yeah. Welcome back to those of you who are here. Hope you had some enlightening conversations amongst you. <sighs> and uh, just so you know, we will also allow at the end here for final comments with everybody rather than in a breakout room. So questions, comments, thoughts that want to be shared with the whole group are all very welcome uh, at the end of the story when we finish up. So on to part two. We had just left old mouse and it was hard for jumping mouse to leave, but he gathered his determination and ran hard again. The ground was rough, but he arched his tail and ran with all his might. He could feel the shadows of the spots upon his back as he ran. All those spots. Finally, he ran into a stand of choke cherries. Jumping Mouse could hardly believe his eyes. It was cool there and very spacious. There was water, cherries, and seeds to eat, grasses to gather for nests, holes to be explored, and many, many other busy things to do. And there are a great many things to gather. He was investigating his new domain when he heard very heavy breathing. He quickly investigated the sound and discovered its source. 
It was a great mound of hair with black horns. It was a great buffalo. Jumping Mouse could hardly believe the greatness of the being he saw lying there before him. He was so large that Jumping Mouse could have crawled into one of his great horns. Such a magnificent being, thought Jumping Mouse, and he crept a little bit closer. Hello, my brother, said the buffalo. Thank you for visiting me. Hello, great being, said Jumping Mouse. Why are you lying here? I am sick and I am dying, the buffalo said. And my medicine has told me that only the eye of a mouse can heal me. But little brother, there is no such thing as a mouse. Jumping Mouse was shocked. One of my eyes? One of my tiny little eyes? He scurried back into the stand of choke cherries, but the breathing came harder and slower. But he will die, thought Jumpy Mouse, if I do not give him my, my eye. He is too great a being to let die. He went back to where the buffalo lay and spoke. I am a mouse, he said with a shaky voice. And you, my brother, are a great being. I cannot let you die. I have two eyes, so you may have one of them. Huh. The minute he said it, Jumpy Mouse's eye flew out of his head, and the buffalo was made whole. The buffalo jumped to his feet. Can you imagine a buffalo jumping to its feet? <laughs> anyway, shaking Jumpy Mouse's whole world. Thank you, my little brother, said the buffalo. I know of your quest for the sacred mountains and of your visit to the river. You have given me life so that I may give away to the people. I will be your brother forever. Run under my belly and I will take you right to the foot of the sacred mountains. And you need not fear the spots. The eagles cannot see you while you run under me. All they will see will be the back of a buffalo. I am of the prairie and I will fall on you if I try to go up the mountains. Little Mouse ran under the buffalo, secure and hidden from the spots, but with only one eye, it was frightening. The buffalo's great hooves shook the whole world each time he took a step. Finally, he came to a place and the buffalo stopped. This is where I must leave you, little brother, said the buffalo. Thank you very, very much, said Jumping Mouse. But you know, it was very frightening running under you with only one eye. I was constantly in fear of your great earth-shaking hooves. Your fear was for nothing, said Buffalo, for my way of walking is the Sundance way, and I always know where my hooves will fall. I now must return to the prairie, my brother. You can always find me there. So we're going to pause again. Um, maybe there were unfinished conversations from your last breakout room, but you might end up with different people this time. So that should be a fun mystery. And I'm going to offer some more questions, and I will write them up in the chat here. Let's see. <clears throat> First question I offer is where in your life have you felt fear, but made the decision to stand your ground or surrender to the unknown? Where in your life have you felt fear, but made the decision to stand your ground or surrender to the unknown. So we're gonna have another little tete a tete and should see this question pop up in the chat now. And let me find the breakout room. Here we go.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope that was really nice. We all have our own stories that we build our lives around, and uh, it's really a beautiful offering to be able to offer our hearing and our hearts through our attentiveness to each one of our stories. Um, so I really love the breakout room aspect of this, and I, I hope that you're enjoying uh, sharing each other's stories. Speaking of stories, uh, the one that we're most focused on today is Jumping Mouse, and we will return to our good friend, Mr. Mouse. And we had just left Buffalo, and Buffalo said, Your fear was for nothing, for my way of walking is the Sundance way, and I always know where my hooves will fall. I now must return to the prairie, my brother. You can always find me there. Jumpy Mouse immediately began to investigate his new surroundings. There were even more things here than in the other places. Busier things, an abundance of seeds, and other things mice like. In his investigation of these things, suddenly he ran upon a gray wolf who was sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Hello, Brother Wolf, Jumpy Mouse said. The wolf's ears perked up, came alert, and his eyes shone. Wolf, wolf, yes, that, that's what I am. I am a wolf. But then his mind dimmed again, and it was not long before he sat quietly again, completely without memory as to who he was. Each time Jumping Mouse reminded him who he was, he became excited with the news, but soon would forget again. Such a great being, thought Jumping Mouse, but he has no memory. Jumping Mouse went to the center of his new place and was quiet. He listened for a very long time to the beating of his heart. Then suddenly, he made up his mind. He scurried back to where the wolf sat and he spoke. Brother Wolf, Jumping Mouse said. Wolf, wolf, said the wolf. Please, Brother Wolf, said Jumping Mouse, please listen to me. I know what will heal you. It is one of my eyes and I want to give it to you. You are a greater being than I. I am only a mouse. Please take it. When Jumping Mouse stopped speaking, his eye flew out of his head, and the wolf was made whole. Tears fell down the cheeks of the wolf, but his little brother could not see them, for now he was blind. You are great, brother said the wolf, for now I have my memory, but now you are blind. I am the guide into the sacred mountains. I will take you there. There is a great medicine lake there, the most beautiful lake in all the world, and the world is reflected there, the people, the lodges of the people, and all the beings of the prairie and skies. Please take me there, Jumping Mouse said. The wolf guided him through the pines to the medicine lake. Jumping Mouse drank the water from the lake. The wolf described the beauty to him. I must leave you here, said Wolf, for I must return so that I may guide others, but I will remain with you for as long as you like. Thank you, my brother, said Jumping Mouse, but although I am frightened to be alone, I know you must go so that you may show others the way to this place. <sighs> Jumping Mouse sat there trembling in fear. It was no use running, for he was blind, but he knew an eagle would find him here. He felt a shadow on his back and heard the sounds that eagles make. He braced himself for the shock, and the eagle hit. Jumping Mouse went to sleep. All right, I'm going to pause one more time. And I really um, 
wanted to discuss the question of sacrifice. It's an interesting word. It can be seen so many ways. And so that'll be our question for this final breakout room. How do you respond when you think of sacrifice? I'm going to type that into the chat. But before I do that, I want, I'm reminded uh, of Cater, um, who speaks a beautiful blessing around the medicine wheel. And uh, as we go around the wheel, sometimes we come to the north, to winter, where we are today. And <clears throat> Cater will offer, sometimes winter, the north, lets go so completely that the spring just shows up. So that's, that's what I'm talking about right now in terms of surrender, is the, the complete letting go. Um, this is something I think about in regards to grief, in regards to loss, in regards to the recognition of boundaries. And there's just times that we have to surrender. And um, so if we can do that like the winter does so completely, that the spring just shows up. And that's when new life comes into our village and new life comes into our heart. So I'm gonna chat that one last little question there. If I can get it. And uh, it's gonna be a very simple one today. And that is, how do you respond when you think of sacrifice? What feelings, what thoughts? All right, that's entered into the chat now. And we'll get a chance for one more breakout room. Enjoy, you all. Wait a second, Daniel. You missed part of the question when you think of sacrifice in the chat. Got you, thanks. Mm -hmm. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Huh. I hope that that was a, another nice connection there that you made with each other. And so glad you're, you're here. And we're going to finish up our story now. Get to hear the end of the story. The thing about a story is that it never really ends. Story is is a living and breathing thing. <clears throat> it grows each with each one of us in a different way. And so the thing that happens if we think we know a story through and through is that we kind of killed our story. And we don't want to kill our story. We want it to live and breathe and teach us every time we read it. And uh, this one's been a part of my life many times. And I always um, find something new to, to revel in. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where were we? Where were we? Oh, yes, Mr. Wolf. Thank you, my brother, said Jumping Mouse. But although I am frightened to be alone, I know you must go so that you may show others the way to this place. Jumping Mouse sat there trembling in fear. It was no use running, for he was blind, but he knew an eagle would find him here. He felt a shadow. He heard the sound that eagles make. Can you hear it? He braced himself for the shock, and the eagle hit. Jumping Mouse went to sleep. Then he woke up. The surprise of being alive was great, but now he could see. Everything was blurry, but the colors were beautiful. I can see, I can see, said Jumping Mouse over and over again. A blurry shape came toward Jumping Mouse. <clears throat> Jumping Mouse squinted hard, but the shape remained a blur. Hello, brother, a voice said. Do you want some medicine? Some medicine for me? asked Jumping Mouse. Yes, yes. 
Then crouch down as low as you can, the voice said, and jump as high as you can. Jumping Mouse did as he was instructed. He crouched as low as he could and then jumped. The wind caught him and carried him higher. Do not be afraid, the voice called to him. Hang on to the wind and trust. Jumping Mouse did. He closed his eyes and hung on to the wind, and it carried him higher and higher. <clears throat> Jumping Mouse opened his eyes, and they were clear. And the higher he went, the clearer they became. Jumping Mouse saw his old friend upon a lily pad on the beautiful Medicine Lake. It was the frog. You have a new name, called the frog. You are Eagle. And uh, <clears throat> Mr. John Steptoe, who wrote this story, put at the end that it's the end, or perhaps a new beginning. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> I'd like to open up everyone's mic that wishes to speak. I'm going to check the chat. I'm glad that there were some sweet connections in the breakout rooms. It's such an uh, amazing piece of this Zoom modality that we are all getting really acquainted with these days. Um, so yeah, anybody who wants to share anything to the whole group that touched them about the story, that confused them, they have a question. Um, yeah, anything at all that needs to be shared. You know, where did you leave the story? Where did it pull you in? Uh, we're here for you. What, you. what you got? Let's see. Hey, mom, do you know how to unblock people's uh, microphones here? To unmute them. I think that people have to unmute themselves, but there could be a way to unmute everybody. Okay. I knew what it was. I don't know. So, yeah. But anyway, people can unmute themselves. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And uh, so for me, the depth of the sacrifice of the mouse is just quite astounding. And it's certainly true in my stories of um, kind of leaning into the fear or the newness or whatever. It's never failed me so far that something grand has, has come along when I've um, embraced the change. Mm. But for some reason, I always get that sense of fear, the shadow of the eagle coming over, I guess, or something like that. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. It definitely <clears throat> brought up some emotions for me, as well as some memories of that idea of letting go completely. And when we let go completely, like when the mother lets go completely, that's when the baby is born. Mm. <laughs> we had a, um, an interesting conversation in our group about sacrifice. And, and it started out as not really liking the word or the idea of sacrifice. And we looked up the meaning mm -hmm saw why that might be it's all about killing and you know um but then um it evolved into um the idea that uh that sacrifice is actually you know 
honorable and that uh, Teresa brought that in and that felt like it shifted the the idea of sacrifice you know that it is an honor it's an honorable thing and it's also uh when when jumping mouse sacrificed his eyes his sight his his maybe his nor, you know sort of normal sight um he received something also that was quite profound out of that honorable state. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Rosemary. <clears throat> um, sacrifice is something that I, <clears throat> I have mixed feelings about as well. And uh, I think I'm leaning into a deeper understanding of it and uh, your words have helped me to, to go there. And thank you for sharing also what Teresa brought. I was wondering if there's any significance to the fact that the mouse was told to squat down as far as possible before jumping, mm -hmm. like hitting rock bottom or something. <laughs> That's a beautiful metaphor. I totally can relate with that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, sometimes we need to hit rock bottom before we make a change. Uh, but then if we, if we hit rock bottom and we make that change, we spring with all our might. That's, that's the hope, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm getting out of that too. That metaphor is, is like, if I, I'm, I'm gonna sacrifice, I really better want, I need mean, to give it my all mm -hmm. to really go, to choose wisely and carefully, but then to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Roger. I totally feel that. And I think our little jumping mouse certainly gave all. I mean, how many of us could just out of sheer faith give up our eyes for others? I mean, that's... No, it, it almost uh, makes me think that the old mouse had some, some validity in what he was saying. Like, what was it? in it for jumping mouse, he lost two eyes and it depends on how you interpret the metaphor. He became eagle, but he also became the eagle, eagle, eagle's meal. So in a sense, he maybe was better off staying at home in the village, organizing his berries. <laughs> like how do you... <laughs> yeah. I found it interesting with the word sacrifice. We had conversation about that and one of my uh, breakout room partners, Zoe, mentioned, you know, when I was talking about every time I said the word I in relationship to what I was talking about, my I, she noted ego, you know, I is in the letter I versus. Mm. And then as I sat and reflected with that, it's, you know, what was being sacrificed there, but a viewpoint or a, or a way of seeing. Um, and then as the story goes on, he had, Jumping Mouse had greater perspective. And, you know, Eagle represents, you know, that, that, that broader perspective. And, and um, so, you know, what are we sacrificing? Not literally our eyeball, but, you know, what facet of ourselves are we letting go of? Mm -hmm. well, I wonder if Amazing perspective, Julia. Thank you for that. And following what Julia said, I'm wondering if maybe what we're sacrificing is a way of seeing. And that would go along with the, his loss of his eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jenna, I, I hear that. And, and I really want to <clears throat> re-mention what Julia said, because I have not thought about. So this story has given me a new gift uh, through you thinking about the I not being E-Y-E, but being like the eye of the ego. Mm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So thinking about the mouse stooping way down there is very humbling. That so feels like a very humble action. Yeah. <clears throat> 
it's also interesting from, there's a lot of talk recently about people, empaths, um, sacrificing too much of their, their self for other people too. I wonder in reflection to that, you know, people learning to um, maybe, yeah, like not hold on to their identity, but at the same time be able to stand up for what they believe in. Is there, mm. where does that message stand in Jumping Mouse's expression? For, you know, for, for those yes, that are already so, sacrificing too much. Mm. And I think that's such a personal thing is like, when are we sacrificing too much? As an empath, as you speak of them, unable to draw boundaries or create a place where, no, I, I've given too much and, and I need to step back. And um, so that's a, it's an interesting topic. Anybody else has anything to respond about that? Well, I think the story for me is very much connected to identity. The, the mouse starts off as a humble mouse and eventually is transformed into an eagle. But it's about the impossibility of becoming the eagle without giving up Mm -hmm. the original perspective mm -hmm. so you could say that the mouse had sacrificed both his eyes but you could also see it in a very positive way which is gradually to lose a particular type of perspective that you start off with mm -hmm. in order to gain a new perspective mm -hmm. and to become yeah. to become the eagle Mm -hmm. And of course, the, there's a part of the story about the old mouse who has lived to become old and has is in a position where he or she can see all around and but is really stuck in that reality, never actually makes the leap into becoming someone or something with a completely different perspective and that that word perspective the humble mouse all the way as low as low could be all the way up to the eagle as high as high could be mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm. i have something worth mentioning that stuck out and feel a burning desire to share um, the last thing the jumping mouse said that I remember was, yes, yes. And it, the excitement that he had in that last moment before he transformed sticks out to me, that choice. Mm. Yeah, he gave that choice with all of him. You could feel his excitement. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And I really appreciate your perspective, John, too, that really opened my eyes uh, in terms of the way that it's all about, you know, the perspective. And so maybe the old mouse, you know, he's lived through what he needs to live through and he's happy with his place. Mm -hmm. But how many times has that seemed like such a difficult thing to hear for me personally? And I think the topic about empath that you brought up is there's people who they just are, they're, they're where they are and they're okay where they are. And there's times I really want to just like ask them to look at things a different way, but you can't, as a, as a sensitive person, I, I can't get too involved uh, with someone who isn't ready to move forward. Um, I can be involved with myself and whether or not I'm ready to be, move forward. 
So thank you for helping to remind me of that valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. And I also want to jump in on the empath subject of, you know, like sacrificing so much of, you know, of yourself and um, having some empathy for that feeling, you know, like I, the, I feel like that this story is the story of a season of, you know, of when it's time to make that sacrifice and when it is time to surrender, when it's time to let go. And then there are other stories of time to drop boundaries, time to act, time to, you know, all of these different ways of being with it. But this one just being a way that we work with what it actually means to surrender and then what is a what is the afterlife of a surrender you know mm -hmm. and it um yeah yeah that's that's just a, a feeling that I, I wanted to speak to on that one mm -hmm. thank you Meg what a great way to talk about afterlife I love that <laughs> that's wonderful mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, five more minutes. Um, I really just cherish these moments when I get to grow and learn and reflection to a story and reflection to other people that I may not be in physical presence with, but can still see many of your smiling faces. And uh, it's just something I, I love about rites of passage doing out in wood in the woods. Um, gathering around the ceremonial fire and just, I mean, many of you have been there, so you know uh, the way that conversations just spiral and grow and evolve and, and new life takes shape in the form of just vulnerability. Um, so mm -hmm. thank you all for offering your perspectives and, and stories and your own places where this moved you and I hope that the breakout rooms also served you well in terms of connecting with others um, in, a, in a vulnerable way. Um, and I wanna offer one last thing as a, as a token. I know it's the winter time, but there's a beautiful new moon outside. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the sky here in Weaverville is absolutely clear. And if any of you feel so called, to throw on another layer or two and step out with those new eyes from this story, lift up your gaze at that new moon and those stars and really allow your heart to expand. Mm. It's be a beautiful way to end the evening. So. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, You're Daniel. Welcome, <laughs> so grateful, thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, until next, you're welcome. Thank you, Conrad. It's so good to see you and so good to see you all, those who I know and those who I don't. I hope I get to see you real soon in, in life. And uh, everyone here, thank you for being part of the story. I'm going to yeah. end the recording now and Aho. 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 Aho.